Hi, and welcome to LB0 Fox India Norwegian Adventures. And today we're going to take a look at how to set up WinLink for the IC706. I've previously made videos on a couple of different radios and how to use WinLink on those. If you look back at my videos, you can see several different types of radios and how to set up WinLink for those. Today's radio is the ICOM IC706 Mark IIG. That's hooked up to an LDG Z100 tuner and then again hooked up to a Wyndham antenna outside here. Uh, computer wise, it's hooked up to a Digirig interface for Digimodes for the 706, which again is hooked into a ThinkPad X230 laptop, which is my preferred portable laptop, not because it's new and fast or has a high resolution screen, but because it's cheap and rugged. And that's what I'm looking for for a portable laptop. So with no further ado, let's jump over to the desktop of that ThinkPad and uh, see if we can set up WinLink, or at least I'm going to show you how I've got WinLink set up because I've tested this before. So it's it's pretty much set up, but I'm going to walk through the settings and demonstrate it for you. So um, let's hop on over to the desktop. And here we are with the Lenovo ThinkPad. The first thing we're going to do is that we're going to go into the Windows Device Manager and we're going to check which COM part is assigned to the Digirig and what the sound card is called. So that's that makes it a lot easier when you go to the setup. So first thing we're going to do is right click the start button here. And my Windows, as I've said before, is a Norwegian, but um, where it says in its bundling on my computer, that's the Device Manager. Then this window pops up and you go into the port setting. And what we're looking for is this port here. Uh, in my case, the Silicon Labs CP210X USB to UART bridge. Depending on the Digimode interface you're using, that might be called something completely different. But an easy way of figuring this out is just unplugging it and you'll see it disappear and plug it back in and it'll pop right up. But in this case, it's COM port 7. So do remember that until we get to the next step. Then we're going to take a look at the sound ports. And we got a USB audio device, a speaker and microphone here. And that's the one we're going to use for the sound here. That is the Digirig. I could rename this to Digirig, but I don't have that money in and out sources on this computer. On the computer, I'm recording this in my studio. That's a whole different story, but that's for another day. So with that information, we're just going to start the WinLink Express software here. Let's get started up and we're going to use a Vara HF WinLink uh, session here. So uh, let's just pray, press open session. That pops up two new windows actually. This session window and a Vara HF window. We're going to take a look at a couple of settings. First in this uh, session windows, we're going to go to settings, uh, radio setup. And these are the settings for the 706 family of radios. It's going to be an ICOM 706 here on radio model. It's going to be USB. Uh, the CIV address, the ICOM address will be auto populated as 58. I have not needed to change this unless you've changed something on your radio. But as a default setting, this is correct. Uh, the use internal sound card tab is checked. Don't know if that makes a difference. And then the serial port for control is going to be the COM7 port that we found earlier. Baud rate 19,200. And for the PTT port, it's going to be uh, the COM port 7 and enable RTS. Those are the settings you need here. If you need to take a look at this, pause the video and then do your uh, own setup after it. Uh, I'm just going to press cancel since I've already set this up. Secondly, we're going to go into the VARA window here settings, sound card, and um, you can see here the correct sound card is checked. It's not the internal sound card of the computer, it's the USB audio device here. And then you can press the tune button and adjust it to the ALC of the radio. It's pretty self-explanatory here. Uh, I found that the 706, at least in my case, uh, in my settings, works best with minus 5 dB here. We're just going to close this. Now everything should be good. So let's go to channel selection here. 
we're just going to press the closest uh, node here with the uh, best path reliability and the best path quality estimate, which is not really far away. We've chosen that. It says channel free. Then we press start. And the radio starts connecting. And you can see the VARA status window here. Down here, you can see that it's attempt 3 out of 15. It'll try this at try this at most 15 times to see if you get a connection sometimes you do on the first try sometimes you got to try a couple more times but it usually goes through though and if not try another node and actually took a little while now when i tested this five minutes ago it went through on the first or second try and we could actually not get a connect there that's good though uh, but the radio starts and tunes and does everything it should uh, we have a 60 meter node here uh, the 706 at least mine does not work in 60 meters so we're gonna skip that and uh, do the 40 meter node here see if we get any more luck on that uh, I'm just gonna tune the radio and press start on 40 meters see if we can get a connection on 40 meters here instead goes through the same set of tries and we are connected and what you hear in the background there is Vara sounds and you can see in the session window that we are connected no new emails uh, just go through this and disconnects uh, just for example's sake, though, let's uh, let's uh, type an email here, um, just so we can uh, get an email on the way here. Let's send an email to uh, my uh, European Hemorrhage Show colleague, Shetel uh, LB4FH. Just type the call sign. This is a live demonstration. Are you getting this? Let's post that to the outbox. You can see that there's one email in the outbox. We go back to the session window and let's just leave the VARA window in the background here so we can see what happens. We're going to press start to connect. And now I'm just going to speed up this process until we get a connection. And we got to enable to connect again. Let's go ahead and try 80 meters and see if that's we got any more luck there now. And thus is the nature of Winlink, though. If it doesn't work on the first try, and that's exactly why I'm showing you this, um, just go ahead and try another band, another node, and see if that works. And if we don't get a solid connection now, we're just going to try another node. So let's speed it up. And we are connected on 80 meters. And we get the usual VAR sounds. And you can see now that it's sending the message. We also got an extremely good signal to noise ratio. If you can look here, it's well in the green. Message is sent and we're disconnected. That's how easy it is. Although it's a little bit of a hassle, it'll give you email while you're not connected to the internet. And that's the point of WinLink though be able to do email when the grid is down, where you don't have internet and all such things. Hope this video was helpful for you. If so, click that like button, leave a comment down below and ask any questions you'd like. I might be able to answer, I might not, but we'll see about that. Most of all, be polite and enjoy my videos. Thank you guys for watching. See you down the bands and see you in my next video, 7-3.